that is, the collective soul, was shattered into 600,000 parts. Each one of these parts, having a piece of the original, each one of these parts a desire. Now, because this is a process, and this is only the halfway point, this broken, shattered aspect of the collective soul in which we experience isolation, separation from each other, a kind of antagonism towards each other, a desire to exploit each other, and an experience of the physical world. This is the halfway point, and it is going to be corrected. It's going to rise back up through this system of worlds, back into this state of adhesion with the Creator, but it can't do it all at once. So purposely, it was broken into 600,000 parts. Each one of these parts was likewise broken down into 613 desires. That is, each individual desire within Adam HaRishon consists of 613 desires that can be corrected. The parts are small enough. It's like dividing a huge treasure and giving a coin to each person, knowing that each one will return this quality of bestowal, this point in the heart that's placed inside of it can be trusted to bring that point back to its origin and put the treasure back together as a collective once again. So in the point in the heart of the individual who begins to feel this desire for spirituality, this coin from the treasury of the king, plus the 612 other desires that exist in the heart must be transformed bit by bit to resemble to a greater degree the quality of the Creator, to reverse this process. Now the thing is, this process of the return, of the correction, of the tikkun, of the transformation, of the fulfillment of the thought of creation, it's going to happen. And all of us, all 600,000 pieces of the collective soul are going to rejoin and are going to ascend from physical selfish perceptions and a world of suffering back into a complete whole interrelationship with each other in such a way that we reach the goal of creation, which is adhesion to the creator and the complete filling and of, of the greatest unbounded desire. It's going to happen. But the question is, will it happen consciously with our agreement or will we be pushed to it? You see, there's one goal and the goal is assured, but there are two paths to the goal. One path is called the path of pain and the other path is called the path of Torah and mitzvot. Now, the path of pain is the path that we're all already on. It's not even really a path. It's what we see as the slow, grinding evolution of humanity that we call history. It is a kind of clinging uh, to our physical way of perceiving, to, our, uh, to the characteristic that we really need to transform. And as a result of this non-conscious involvement, with the process of development, we find ourselves being pushed by events. We see catastrophes, we see tsunamis, we see wars, we have personal experiences in our lives, experiences of pain, experiences of suffering that are caused only by the, the lack of conscious involvement with the process of the development of desires and their correction. Now this path can go on and on and on and it's disastrous. Once the point in the heart appears in a person, though, it becomes a conscious involvement. And this is the path of Torah and mitzvot. Torah means instruction by the light. And mitzvot means a transformation of a quality of one of the 613 desires from its egoistic expression to its altruistic expression. Every event that happens in our lives is really uh, a mitzvah 
a possibility for transformation being presented to us. Now, when I say the word mitzvah, I don't mean like the physical commandments where you are instructed to do a certain thing that are, and there's a list of all these things in the Shulchan Arach, in the table of the Jewish law and so on, do this physical thing. Now, I'm not saying don't do the physical thing, but what I mean is that this is an inner correction. It's a correction of desire. So whether you do the external good deed, uh, you know, whether it's a religious good deed or whether it's something that we consider to be something nice for somebody else, you can do any external deed and you can be filled with hatred and selfishness. You can't measure anything by that. Talking about one of these 613 desires that's presented to us as an event in our life. Our entire lives are planned in such a way by this process of development to present us with the opportunity to take what we first feel as a desire to receive for myself in a given situation and transform that into its altruistic form to try to understand what the thought of the Creator is, the thought behind giving me that situation. Because, as you remember, the only way that we progress uh, along spiritual space is by altering a quality within me to resemble that quality in spirituality that I want to enter. So, what it is that I want to know according to this new desire, this uh, desire straight for the Creator, is I want to know the Creator. I want to have a direct sensation. I want to feel in my desires and the tangible things that occur in my life, what is the thought of the one, of the upper one, of that upper level that gave me this perfectly structured situation, that gave me this opportunity, like a, a birthday present, for me to take it first in its corrupted form and by analyzing this and seeing what it is, feeling what his thought is behind it. That's a mitzvah. That's tikkun. That's transformation. These 125 states by which we descended from our connection to the complete reality down into our separated status uh, as individual people and desires, these 125 steps are also completely encompassed by these 613 mitzvot. So that the correction of, of these, um, these transformations will bring the individual all the way back up the ladder.